In this video, I will show you how you can run, debug and change Doom Classic on Windows and Linux. The game Doom or Classic Doom was released 1993 and it was a first-person shooter game changer at the time. Luckily, the game engine was open sourced more than 25 years ago and since then Doom was ported to almost every platform in existence. From PCs to mobile phones to calculators to toasters, I even saw one running Doom on a pregnancy test display. Wild! Doom was also ported to various programming languages. For instance, this port was written in C Sharp and it's called Managed Doom. So in this video, we will take a look at this one. We will download the source code, build it, debug it and run it on Windows and Linux. But before we do anything, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps so you can skip any part if you want. I am now here on the Manage Doom GitHub page. So as mentioned, this one was written in C Sharp and it was manually translated from the original Linux Doom. Down here you can see a few screenshots and also a video gameplay. If you want you can try it out without building the source code. Just go to releases and here you can find a zip file with the Windows version. But I want to build this one from source. So let's copy the GitHub link. Here it is. Copy. And now let's get over to Visual Studio. This is the Visual Studio launcher. I'm using the IDE, but if you want, you can also use Visual Studio code. Let's clone the repository. Now here, paste the Git link and choose your source path. For me, this is okay. And let's clone. It downloaded two projects, Manage Doom and Manage Doom Test. And here are the source files. Now let's do calculate code metrics for solution. Down here you should see the results. So the project has 47,000 lines of code and almost 12,000 are executable. If I compare this with my Snappy Mouse Run game, which I made a few years back, Snappy Mouse Run has about 32,000 lines of code and 8,000 line executable code. It was also written in C Sharp and it was made in Unity. So the size is comparable. This one has about 25% more code, but here you have to do the rendering by hand and with Unity, the engine does all the heavy lifting for you. If you want to try out Snappy Mouse Run, it is a free endless runner game that you can get on App Store and Google Play, or if you click on the link up there or down in the description. Now that we know the size of the project, the next step is to build it. Let's see if it works out of the box. Right click on the solution and build solution. Build succeeded. So this worked out of the box without changing anything. And I can see this was built for .NET 7, which is not an LTS version. It's either 6 or 8. So it would be good to update the project to .NET 8. But first, let's see if we can run it. Manage Doom and play. That's what I thought. I have .NET 5, 6 and 8 installed, but no 7. For me, it's easier to just update the project. Enter. Right click on the project. Edit. And now here where it says target framework, write .NET 8. Control S to save. Let's do this also for the test project. .NET 8, save. Let's run it again. We get an exception, no iWOD was found. This is the file that contains all the game data, all the levels and all the characters. This one was not included in the project because the project only contains the engine. And only the engine was made open source, but not the game data, which is fine. If you purchase the game on Steam, you will get the original file and you can import it here. Or, since the engine is open source, many have created their own game data. 
their own levels, their own characters, their own animations, even recreated the whole game, sort of. You can find many such iWatt files if you just Google it. For instance, a popular one is Free Doom, which is entirely fan-made. If you go to download, here you can find the Watt files and download them. But if you rather want to stick with the original Doom experience, then you can check out the shareware version. On the Doom World website, you can find the shareware files, which is like a free demo release, not only for Doom, but also for Hexen, Heretic, and Strife. I will go with Doom shareware. Here is the link. And yes, I want to keep it. And now here is the what file. Let's copy this one into the project, open folder, and just paste it in here. Paste. We can close that. Here is the what file and set inside properties, copy to output directory to copy if newer. That's it. If you want to know which files are all supported, go to source, config utility. Then here you can see a list of files that are supported. And here is our Doom 1 file. The last three are basically free to try. And the first four are the commercial ones. Now we have the what file, but there is still one additional thing that we need. And that's the manage Doom config file. This one usually contains all the key bindings that you can change if you want. It can also be empty, then the default bindings will be used. So let's create an empty config file. I will copy the name and let's do right click on the project, add new editor config. Now let's delete the file content, control S to save. And also let's rename it to manage doom CFG. Copy to output directory, set to copy if newer. And that's about it. Let's start again. And here is Doom. Now the window is a bit small. Let's change that. We can change this inside the config file. Just add video screen width equals for instance, 1,280 video screen height equals 800. This should do. Save it, control S and run. Much better. Now let's play it. New game. This is it. I'm not playing with the mouse and keyboard. Let's find some enemies. Not bad, right? Now this was Doom running on Windows in debug mode. Now let's try to run it on Linux in WSL. Now in this video, I will assume that you already installed WSL on Windows and that you have a WSL distribution running like Ubuntu, for instance. Once you have that, it's just a toggle switch inside Visual Studio. Up here at the play button, you can see a little drop-down error. Click on it and here it is, WSL. Select it. Now there is one additional thing that we need to do in WSL. So open the WSL console. Here we need to install the writes.net version. In my case, this is .NET 8. I'm running Ubuntu. So let's do sudo apt install .NET 8 run. .NET is installed. Let's check the version. Yes, .NET 8. That's correct. Now we can close that and let's run Doom in WSL, WSL play. And here it is, Doom running on WSL. Now you can play this in WSL and everything should work fine, but there were actually some errors in the background. If we check the console, we can see the what file was loaded, that's okay. But before that, we have restore settings failed. Now let's see what the problem was, stop Doom. 
go to exception settings and turn on common language routine exceptions. Now it will break on exception and we can debug it. Let's start again. And here is our exception. It cannot find the manage doom config file. And it looks like that it searches the file in the wrong directory. Let's see where the path is coming from. Go to call stack. Here is our method config. And we are coming from config utilities dot get config path. Let's go inside. Here we are getting the manage doom config file, but the exe directory is as it seems a wrong one. Let's make a breakpoint here and start again. Here we are. And now let's copy get current process main module file name and paste this into the immediate window and enter. All right, so the current process is actually .NET, the framework, which makes sense because the framework is running Doom. So on WSL, we cannot use get current process. We have to change it. Let's stop and let's remove that. We actually want the executing assembly and not the process. To get the executing assembly, write assembly.getExecutingAssembly.location. So what this does, it gets the assembly that contains the code that is currently executing. And that's what we want. Now let's try it out with our change, build and run. The breakpoint is hit. Now let's copy that into the immediate window. Yes, so this is the path that we want. As you can see, this is our build path. In WSL, the Windows C directory is mounted under slash MNT. And also something interesting, the .NET DLLs can run on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Because .NET is cross-platform, and the only thing that we need on the platform is to have .NET installed. That's also what we did in WSL. We installed .NET. So let's see if this goes through. I will press F10 to step through the code and F11 to go inside. And now let's see, F10, all right, no exception anymore. Let's disable exceptions and also delete all breakpoints. And let's play Doom, continue. Now here on WSL, you can't really play with the mouse because it just rotates randomly. So I have to play with the keyboard only. Take that. Level finished. Now I will save the game for later. And let's quit. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much. And the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. This is not the first time I'm debugging .NET applications in WSL. In a previous video, I showed you how you can create cross-platform GTK applications using C-sharp.net. And there I created a simple GTK GUI that can run on Windows and Linux. So if you want to create cross-platform GTK applications yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.